Hey guys, welcome back to the iPhone 7 review. Well, if you've missed the introduction or me talking about the internals, well, the introduction is here and the internals are here. So go check them out if you haven't already and let's begin with the OS and the integration spin. Well, the very first thing that Apple has introduced in the new iPhone 7 is that they've completely gotten rid of the physical home button and replaced it with the capacitive button. And what that essentially does is when you tap it, it triggers the haptic engine, which is a haptic feedback generator. It basically uh, sends a vibration throughout your device and you get a physical confirmation of something happening. But what Apple has done is introduced this API so third party developers can leverage it and use it in their own apps. Now the OS also uses it in a lot of ways throughout and it is really, really brilliant. So for example, if you're scrolling uh, through a date picker, well, every time you change your selection, the phone is going to generate some feedback letting you know that some change has occurred similarly when you turn a switch on or off you're going to get a feedback and the developers don't have to do anything to get this feature it all comes out of the box just by using the native elements but of course developers can go ahead and write their own feedbacks and use them as they wish for example when you're zooming in on a photo and you can't zoom it anymore the developer can send you a quick feedback letting you know that hey that's not possible or if you zoom out it can simply generate a feedback letting you know that it has done that successfully so the integration of the haptic engine throughout the os and making it available to third-party developers is possibly one of the biggest changes in ios 10 and the iphone 7 that you'll be able to notice now of course you already know what 3d touch is and if you've owned a success well you know how it works but if you don't, well, 3D Touch is basically you applying a little bit of pressure on your screen and, well, you can do amazing things with it. Now, what Apple has done in iOS 10 is taken this to a whole new level, especially in the music app. Now, I've done a full coverage of the music app in iOS 10, so go check it out. And I also talk about the 3D Touch features in there. Nonetheless, apps can use 3D Touch in a lot of amazing ways. Now, I know games that use 3D Touch to fire bigger missiles and cannons and stuff a regular chain gun or something like that so developers are coming up with pretty interesting ways to use 3d touch so i'm very excited to see the future of 3d touch and apps especially now that you know it's on all of apple's iphones except they are still reluctant on bringing it to the ipad but i see why they do that you don't want your ipads to bend do you Talking about the OS and the new features, well, Safari, the native built-in browser that you get with iOS, has gotten full 100% ES6 compatibility. What this means is developers can write much more performant code. And well, this is not just something uh, pulling out of the hat. We ran some uh, benchmarks. It's called Motion Benchmarks. And well, uh, OnePlus's uh, flagship phone, the OnePlus 3, scored 20.62. Okay. That's the baseline. iPhone 6s scored a 214. So, if you, I'm going to give you a moment to guess the iPhone 7's score. Now you have your number. The iPhone 7 scored a staggering 360. Now that's a huge jump from its predecessor, the 6s itself. So, think about it for two well. well, guys, that's a wrap up of the OS integration with the iPhone 7. Well, if you've missed out on other videos, we have the introduction up here, the internals up here, and we're gonna next check out the camera section down here, and finally, the auto integration out there. Well, if you like this review, hit the like button. If you disliked it, you know what to do. If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you down in the comments. Cheers.